welcome to the Draft Social Media Podcast. It's what social media managers are talking about. I'm Chloe, and today I'm joined by our social media manager, Laura, and social media assistant, Christy. Hello. Hi. Coming up on this week's episode, we'll be discussing what we've been loving about the Olympics this year, our top tips for creating Instagram promoted posts, along with how Pinterest has lost over 24 million users as a result of lockdowns easing. Girls, how have your weekends been? Have you been tuning into the Olympics this year? I had a good weekend thank you went up to London which was so nice um I have been loving the Olympics I haven't been watching it as much as normal I don't think because for some reason I've not heard about it as much as normal but um we were watching the skateboarding the other day which was insane because we'd never been into skateboarding and suddenly we were these like huge skateboarding fans we were like (laughs) they would do like this perfect routine and we'd be like oh messed up right there (laughs) um (laughs) but it's so it's so weird because you do just find yourself watching these random sports you've never even heard of and like loving it. Definitely. I love how they've added in like skateboarding and like BMXing, yeah. which is like not something that I think they've done before, but is kind of cool for viewers to watch. Yeah. What have you been watching, Laura? See, I uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't really been watching the Olympics, I have to admit. I hear a I hear a lot about it. But also don't think I hear as much about it as I have done in previous years. I did watch the diving where obviously Tom Daly won his first um, gold. So I was really, really chuffed with that. But other than that, yeah, I haven't really been watching it. So I'm a bit of a, I feel like a bad person for that. But (laughs) I've I've been keeping up with what's going on online and, and hearing about it on the radio and stuff. So like I'm, I'm there totally. in spirit yeah <laughs> I feel kind of feel like I don't know if it's just me but it kind of seems like it's all of us the Olympic hype has kind of died I remember when it was like I was a kid it was massive yeah. and you always tune in but this year maybe not so much and I don't know if that's because of you know everything else that's going on or maybe I was watching the men's 100 meter sprint final and obviously Usain Bolt has retired and I'm like it's not the same so I don't know if it's yeah it's kind of lost we're out of the glory days what do you think yeah yeah I agree and it's a shame because if you watch it Japan has put in so much uh, like it looks amazing especially I don't know if you saw the opening ceremony but it was amazing so it was kind of sad I was just kind of watching it on catch-up I didn't even realize it had started but we were saying how amazing it looked so I do I do feel bad for Tokyo who have been waiting so long for it but yeah I definitely agree with that Mm -hmm. yeah I agree with that as well yeah I mean one of the reasons I've kind of known that the Olympics started like you Christy I kind of wasn't aware that it had begun but a lot of the Olympians are actually on TikTok have you guys seen them on your for you page has anyone that stood out to you (laughs) I did see them pop up for a bit but I don't in the last couple of weeks I haven't as much so Mm -hmm. yeah did you see that one photo of um, Tom Daly that was circulating? He was watching an event and he was like knitting during knitting. it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, so I love you. that. <laughs> yeah, I got to say this year, I'm not like massive into football. And yeah, the Olympics have kind of gone over my head. But the TikTok accounts for those associations have definitely, you know, had a lot of weight on their backs. have been carrying it through. And that's how I've been yeah. tuning in. <laughs> Not to the yeah. events themselves, just the recaps on TikTok. So <laughs> that's so interesting. Moving on to our main segment of this week's episode, we're going to be sharing some of our top tips for creating Instagram promoted posts. Instagram is a great place for businesses to be right now. With a business account, you've got great access to features like insights, promoted posts, ad campaigns, shoppable product tags, and so much more. I think advertising on Instagram, however, can often be a little bit tricky. The platform has a lot of rules and regulations put in place by Facebook, but its focus on visual elements is what makes it stand out from other platforms like Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, Laura, you create quite a lot of promoted posts on Instagram in your role. Why don't you tell the listeners what they are and how we use them and why we use them? 
Yeah, definitely. So Instagram promoted posts essentially allow Instagram business users to turn an organic post into an ad. Now, when you're creating your promoted post, you can select targeting so you can make a really highly targeted post. So, for example, if you have a particular competition or giveaway and you want you want to be able to reach new and relevant users with that competition or giveaway, um, you can promote it and target it to um, your target audiences. Um, news feeds so that they can enter and get involved or what have you. Um, so essentially, it's a really effective way to really boost your organic posts that are on your page. Um, generally, we use promoted posts for um, driving engagement. So we want our um, clients' Instagram feeds to be full of highly engaged posts, loads of likes, loads of comments. Um, so we boost them. Um, but that being said, there are different objectives that you can use in the po promoted post. So for example, traffic, if you wanted to promote a particular product that was featured on your Instagram feed, you could promote that and link um, the post to the the website or to the product directly as well um, and that's the same for conversion so if you wanted again to promote something in particular and you want to encourage people to buy something then you can link it so that people can buy it from that promoted post as well um, so it's a highly highly effective um, way of getting your posts um, seen by new and relevant users that you want to target Absolutely. Now, before we get into the juicy top tips and ways to create really fun and engaging promoted posts, we need to talk a little bit about the rules and regulations. Uh, Instagram uses the same policies as Facebook, so you are limited to what you can and can't post. Um, we always recommend reading up on the guidelines that Facebook provides to make sure that your ads aren't going to get rejected. So if you're using sensational content in your imagery or including personal attributes, that's obviously going to get flagged. Um, so posts about political issues, alcohol and subscription services are not banned, but they are restricted and come with some extra rules that you need to follow. Um, so make sure you're staying up to date with the regulations because you could be at risk of not only having your ads rejected, but your entire ad account could also be at risk if you um, get flagged too many times. <laughs> so now we've gone through some of the boring T's and C's. Let's get into some of our top tips on ways to create engaging promoted posts for your Instagram. Christy, what can social media managers do on the creative side of things to create the best promoted posts possible? Yeah, so I've got a few tips. I would say, first of all, limit on image text because obviously one of, I mean, we all know how annoying Facebook slash Instagram rules are. Literally, there's something for everything, um, including on image text. They've always, up until recently, um, penalised images with a certain amount of text on them. It's 20% or over were sort of uh, were penalised. And obviously in a more visual way, people don't tend to read images with that much text on it. You have that little bit of text to sort of draw people in and they read the copy. Um, more recently, it has they have relaxed their rules a little bit, moved away from those systems. So there is like a tiered system now, um, sort of dependent on how much text you've used on it. But I think it's best just to stay away altogether if you can or use a very limited amount where, you know, you draw someone in with that little bit of text that um, buy now or on sale or that kind of thing. Let them read the copy and find out that way. Um, I would also say using a big variety of content or a wide variety of content because plainly people don't want to see the same content on their feed all the time. Um, people will kind of ignore the more spammy images and they do, if, if someone follows you, or if someone sees your ad, they don't want to see exactly what they saw last time. If they've already clicked on that ad, they want something new. They want to see what else you offer. And I think leading on from that, using high quality images or interesting images that will actually draw people in. is I'd say that's probably the most obvious, but also the most important um, aspect of promoted posts, for sure. Because... I mean, we spoke recently about Canva and all the, the wonders of Canva. It's so easy to create those amazing looking posts. You can do it in minutes and there's all those templates. So 
you know, using the wide variety of content and the really interesting looking images that's going to draw people in. And it also looks professional and people want to go to a professional look, you know, people will click on it, a professional looking site rather than one that's sort of a bit thrown together. So yeah, I'd say, I would say that they're my top tips. Definitely. I think the thing to remember with promoted posts is that you're trying to reach new audiences. So you're constantly putting out the same kind of content. It's it's not going to have the effect. Like, you know, one post might work for some segment of your audience, but another post might work really well for another. So definitely mix up and experiment with, with what you're posting. Don't you agree, ladies? Yeah, definitely. And I think another thing you can do as well is experiment with different audiences as well. So um, you could try promoting um, perhaps one organic post to one type of audience and then test the same post on another audience segment and see which performs best, see which audience is most engaged with your posts and all of that. So I think, again, with, with a lot of social media, um, A-B testing, split testing and all of that is, is really key even from audiences to creatives themselves as well. Definitely. Absolutely. I think it like funnels into what you're organically posting anyway as well. Like if you find that all of your promoted posts are kind of really similar and the content's the same, then maybe you can kind of take that feedback and be like, oh, maybe all of my organic posting is a bit repetitive as well. So it kind of feeds nicely into your own content strategy. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, Laura, what are some more additional ideas that can help us make the most out of promoted posts? Yeah, so as I've sort of already touched on, um, competitions and giveaways, these are um, a great piece of content to maximise the number of likes or engagements you receive. So as you know, on a competition or giveaway, generally you're going to be asking your audience to do something. So for example, like like, comment, tag a friend or share to stories. Um, so promoting this type of content is a great way to get the most out of um the engagement and the reach that you'll get gain from it. Um, another piece of content that's great to promote is video content. So as we all know, um, working in social media, video content just seems to outperform any other type of content. Um, so, <laughs> so again, promoting video content is a useful way to receive more engagement and interactions on the post. Um, it is probably more important now more than ever that we include subtitles on the videos if you can um, and make them as silent friendly as possible um, because I think it's around 85% of Facebook users view videos without the sound on so if there's like important information in the video it would be really good if you could um, subtitle so that someone doesn't need to actively listen in order to get the information and you'll probably more likely receive um, higher engagements from including subtitles and sort of leading on from that as well is a call to action. So a promoted post should be directing your audience to do something. So for example, to visit the website, to um, like, share, comment, add to stories. Um, so obviously you've got particular call to actions like learn more, shop now or sign up as well. That is a, is a really, really hard direct call to action. Um, all of which obviously will encourage users to click through to your website or a product description. Um, the CTA, so the landing page or the website that you want people to go to, um, should obviously match the stage that the buyer journey's in. So we generally say if you're promoting um, a post that's I don't know, the objective, for example, is to purchase something, you might want to um, consider retargeting an audience with that post as opposed to targeting um, a cold new audience or an interest-based audience. However, if it's just an awareness post or an engagement post, like you can reach new, um, new and relevant audiences through interest targeting and they're sort of just sort of making sure you're considering where your users are on the marketing funnel based on the post that you're promoting um, is a great way, again, to sort of make sure you're achieving, achieving the correct objectives for that post. 
Um, so yeah, I think they are my three key top tips for Instagram promoted posts. Yeah, that's some super sound advice. And I want to go back to what you were saying about um, videos and subtitles, because I think like, you know, you can promote stories, you can promote Instagram reels, you can promote like videos themselves. And even over on TikTok, like if you're investing that money, you know, whether it's like 20 pounds or 50 pounds, whatever, if your video doesn't have subtitles, then it's a chance that like over 50% of your audience is just not even going to receive the message. So exactly definitely important yeah. to consider if you're gonna you know funnel money into something make sure that it's it's accessible and the message is going to be received um so that's super yeah super good yeah. advice and I think Instagram is working on adding auto-generated subtitles I think they've done it to reels I know TikTok's done it to their videos um, yeah so people are kind of petitioning for it to happen in in feed videos as well so definitely. that will be That'd be amazing. (laughs) I think the other kind of just the key point, if you like, um, is just to remember the the minimum five pound daily spend. So that's obviously applicable on Facebook, but it's also applicable on Instagram. So when you're promoting a post, say for example, if you're if you're using twenty pounds, you can run that post for four days because obviously twenty divided by four is the five pounds. But if you're running a £20 promoted post, then you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't run it over that four days because it just wouldn't, it wouldn't um, run optimally or effectively. So it's just, just something to bear in mind with promoted posts. Awesome. Those are some great tips, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, At Giraffe, we invest a lot of time into running and optimizing our clients' advertising. So, you know, we like to think we know a thing or two about that arena. So if you do need any help with advertising on social, make sure you reach out to us and we can lend a helping hand. Our DM today, ladies, is all about how to get more saves on Instagram. What type of content can we be putting out there that's going to guarantee us to get saves? As we know, saves is like one of the top metrics Instagram measures. So the more saves you get on a post in like the first hour, the better typically your post is going to perform. Um, Christy, I'm going to throw it over to you first as one of our resident content creators. Um, What can this user be doing to ensure they're getting more saves on their posts? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I would say tips and hacks are really good. So um, particularly, obviously related to the industry that you're in, you're posting about, they're really good for engagement. Um, and I mean, particularly safe because you do come back, especially if it's completely relevant to you, you it is something you want to come back to later. I've definitely found myself um, back in, back in the early days seeing posts like tips on how to get back when likes were more important than saves. I was definitely <laughs> saving like how to get more likes on your post. Because yes. um, even if even if you don't come back to it later, it's just su- such an easy thing to do. And it definitely you definitely do see more save saves on those kinds of content. Yeah, so I would say going on from that, the second part, I would say lists are really good for engagement. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think lists are awesome because they work really well as like carousel posts as well, which is almost a double whammy because carousel posts also perform really well on Instagram. I think the longest someone is reading or like staying on your post, again, is another metric that Instagram uses to dictate how well it performs. So I think things like um, five social media tools um, and then you list off the social media tools of your social media manager, for example, or maybe if you're in like the hardware industry, like five different tools again um to help you with your gardening this weekend i think they work really well i think christy you've kind of touched on educational content i think performs super well on uh on social media these days so anything any value that you can provide your customer or your audience um in like an educational format like a a tips and tricks or a hack or a list format will perform really really well definitely Laura, what do you think? What are you saving most on Instagram these days? 
So I can hands down say the thing that I save the most on Instagram are quotes. I mean, I am quote queen. <laughs> I love quotes. <laughs> Anything that provides me inspiration and motivation, I'm saving so that I can <laughs> look back on it. So I think quotes are super, super important. Obviously, if they're relevant to your industry, um, to include as part of your Instagram strategy, because like I said, if, you're, if your audience is anyone like me, they're going to be saving them. They're going to be coming back to them. Um, I would also say anything like infographics, so a post that obviously displays um, all of the information in one image or a carousel um, infographic. Like carousel. We do love a carousel. Also helps to educate your audience. So similar to like t- tips um, and hacks and lists and things like that, infographics also there to, to educate and provide value to your audience in some way. So therefore more likely to be saved um, by users defo yeah. i think quotes are like i don't i don't want to say they're undervalued because they were definitely massive in like the 2010s like everyone was posting oh really like vague mysterious quotes but i think they perform really well i don't think they're outdated i think if it fits your like niche or your industry um and it's kind of like that aspirational type thing people are always going to save it we love quotes we never stop loving them we just stopped posting them so <laughs> wise words from chloe <laughs> <laughs> make that a quote we never stopped posting quotes no we never stopped loving quotes we stopped posting them chloe yeah, love that. that's a quote <laughs> <laughs> quoteception <laughs> catch that on the giraffe instagram next week <laughs> love that love that yeah no i love that as well that's good. Fantastic. <laughs> well, those that was our top DM for this week. Hopefully we answered your question. Um, if you want to be featured in next week's episode, make sure you slide into our DMs. Send us a question. We would be more than happy to answer. Now it's time to dive into the top social media story of this week. Pinterest has lost 24 million users as lockdowns ease and physical stores begin to reopen around the world. Now, girls, I know I love a good pinboarding sesh, but have you been using Pinterest less over the past few months? Yeah, I would say. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> I would say, I don't know about you, Laura and Chloe, I would say I'm definitely guilty of that. I do still, even in 2021, I prefer an on, a, an in-person physical shop, being able to try try things on. So as much as I can go on Pinterest and like see clothes that I love, for me, still nothing beats going into a shop and like mm-hmm. actually trying it on and getting out there. And unfortunately, Pinterest is like the collateral damage in that. <laughs> <laughs> not just Pinterest obviously all all of the sites seem to be but um yeah it pains me to see so many shops going out of business but um I still I still love you Pinterest still love you <laughs> see I haven't noticed my Pinterest behavior dropping since the easing of lockdown um but then I I've I'm one of those people that goes through stages with Pinterest anyway like I'll go through a couple of months where I'm on it quite a lot I'm saving quite a lot um and then I'll go through a couple of months where I just don't seem to go on it as much and then the same thing happens a few months later um but I definitely still use it for things like room inspo and like aesthetics and or like nail designs or things like that Mm. I I still use it and that is still my go-to platform for all of that um I would say overall my social media usage has dropped like from all platforms over the last um sort of month or so and that is purely down to obviously being out and about a bit more than I was a few months ago um so I don't think it's a Pinterest personal thing for me (laughs) it's nothing personal it's nothing personal Well, to give the listeners a little bit of context, after 11 consecutive quarters of use growth, Pinterest has taken a hit and has seen a decline in overall users in quarter two of this year. Now, I know this because my boyfriend has just invested stocks in Pinterest and will not stop telling me about how they've dropped in the last week because of this user (laughs) decline. Um, So 
lucky me. He's chosen his timing. He's chosen <laughs> yeah, his timing. <laughs> the timing is, could not be worse. But um, <laughs> Pinterest attributes this to the world slowly reopening and consumers returning to shopping IRL instead of online. So if you've been running Pinterest ads over the past few months and you've seen lower results than usual, this could be why. I think it's an interesting look at social media as a whole. I think we've just touched on it. I know a lot of accounts across social media um, platforms have received lower reach and impressions as a result of recent times. Do you girls agree that it's because people are spending more time outside now that we're free than they are inside and online at the moment? Yeah, definitely. I think I think any external factors like that is going to have um, a huge impact on our like online and indoor behaviours, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not really surprised that that's the case. Um, I think I think it's also when you, you sort of take a look back March last year of the first lockdown and how like things increased online I don't think it's surprising that sort of the opposite has happened um now now sort of restrictions have been completely lifted definitely I don't know about you girls but my screen time during lockdown was very embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) and I'm definitely I'm definitely not gonna peak from that probably for the rest of my life (laughs) (laughs) just that data that's cemented from 2020 2021 pandemic usage (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, it's gonna go. It's gonna go in museums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting because Laura, you were just saying that you know you've taken a dip in your Pinterest usage, and I think you know a, a lot of that reason is because people are going out and you know buying things in real life. They don't need to you know try before you buy online. They can do it physically in stores. But I think Pinterest is also like you kind of have to be leading up to something to use Pinterest. Like you either have to be leading up to a big project leading up to your nail day you know you need nail inspo or maybe leading into a different season so you need a little bit of outfit inspo that kind of thing and I feel like we haven't really needed that this past you know couple of months because there's not really been anything the only thing we've been leading up to is freedom so you don't really have to use Pinterest to you know what you love and you just go back to doing that so I think that's an interesting take on things yeah Do you guys have any tips on how people can improve their spend or their engagement on social media over the next few months? Because I think it's definitely, you're right, it's not just a Pinterest-wide thing. I think all social media platforms have seen a little bit of a dip in in user engagement as a whole because of us, you know, going outside and putting our phones down. Um, I think my tip would be, like, don't you know, don't be afraid to sort of do nothing. And I I say that, but what I mean by that is if you're seeing a dip in your social media performance for your clients or for your own business, you know, don't sort of be afraid to take a bit of a a back seat and perhaps think, you know, maybe at the moment it's not the right time to be sort of spending budget and perhaps wasting it. Um, so maybe start storing that and then have a big sort of blowout when things have have eased a little bit because we are still in the early phases of people going out more and perhaps their their spending habits have changed, their lifestyle habits have suddenly changed. So that is going to have a big impact, but that will essentially sort of, you know, line itself up properly over the next couple of months. So, you know, if if you're feeling like you're not getting the results that you want, take a look back at your previous strategy, look at what's worked, Look, take a look at what hasn't worked and work mm-hmm. on sort of building that strategy again so that when, you know, over the next couple of months, when things do sort of align a little bit better, you can restart that strategy knowing exactly, you're, knowing that you're doing exactly what works. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be, that would be my top tip. Yeah, I think likewise, it's important, don't like, go crazy trying to think of new ideas because your posts aren't performing so well. Like, it's it's not you, it's it's everyone else, like people are just out enjoying their lives, it's got nothing to do with your content. So I think while now is a good time to experiment, don't, you know, pull your hair out trying to think of new concepts, because it is, you know, more likely that it's just people not seeing it because they're not on their phones, as opposed to people not liking that content itself. So 
I think pretty much everyone's taking that same hit, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's in the same boat, <laughs> unfortunately. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all your insight today, girls. I think that's all we've got time for for this episode. If the listeners enjoyed listening, don't forget to subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or give us a follow if you're listening on Spotify and have not already. We'd love to hear what you thought about today's episode. So make sure you reach out on social media. Send us a DM, you know, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. We've been Giraffe Social Media. You've been amazing. We'll see you next time. Thank you.